I got in trouble with myself uh, last weekend. I was pretty pissed at myself. I uh, was at dinner with my dad, my dad's girlfriend, my little brother, his, my dad's best friend, and his uh, new 30-year-old uh, girlfriend. Now, my dad's best friend is 64 years old, and he's dating a 30-year-old uh, with a 5-year-old son. So, freshly, freshly able to walk. You know, uh, taking its first steps. Still a little bit, kind of walks with his feet a little too far in front of him. Or his, or his head a little too far in front. Or a little too back sometimes. You know, this is, a, this is a new kid. This is five years old. This is barely a person. You know, he doesn't have rights yet. Anyways, we're out to dinner. It's the first time I've met uh, the 30-year-old and the little boy. And I made at dinner, I made one of the uh, the key mistakes in a new in a in a new meeting of meeting somebody else. I made one of the key mistakes, and that is to use the the word for mentally challenged people. You know, it's not the word mentally challenged, but it's the other word that we use, the one that starts with an R, you know, uh, retard, the retard word. You know, I use that at the dinner table, and I don't think everyone really appreciated it, you know, and I, I kind of took a little bit of a self-reflection at that moment, you know, because you got, you got two 60-year-old men at a dinner table, they're using that word, you know. But you got a 30-year-old at the table, and you use the word retard, you know, you're going to be fighting some battles, uh, some inner demons, and you're also going to have to deal with uh, the 30-year-old's uh, perception of you. You know, you have to deal with the, the long stare after... After using such a word to describe mentally challenged people, you're going to have to deal with the stare. You know, so I, I said the word, I don't remember what in the context, but I think it was the type of context where I used the word to get a laugh. And I didn't get the laugh, I just was told to, uh, don't say that. You know, back in my day, I was, uh... Grown up, the R word was the proper way to describe a mentally challenged person. Now it's more seen as like a, one of the things that can get you, uh, let's say, canceled. I don't know. I don't believe in all that. But yeah, for sure, I used uh, the R word in front of a 30-year-old woman mom. A 30-year-old white woman mom. And you can't say anything in front of a 30-year-old white woman mom. You know, you can't say most things. Most things you can't say. You know, you can talk about vegetables. You can talk about... You can't talk about sports. That's offensive. But you can talk about vegetables and fruits most of the time. You can talk about health. You can talk about granola bars. You know, you can talk about most food groups with a white, with a 30-year-old white woman mom. But uh, don't use the R word at dinner. That's a number one fact. I, I learned that valuable lesson uh, over the weekend. All right, let's get into it. Where the hell is Spider-Man? 
You and hourglass spend hours on your booty Sundown Cadillac, fuck let's make a movie Pop a tab, sit back, let your body feel it I know you down to fuck, I can almost guarantee it Skies changing colors, baby, can you even feel it? The world is all yours, it's just how you perceive it In the grocery with groceries for the family Please hop off my dick it's not your fucking seat I'm telling the truth But I'm mostly made of lies Fuck a dress, wear a skirt Let me see them thighs You don't like dessert But want a cream pie Stop putting up a front Bitch, I know you're not shy And I could get another bitch Just one call away But I won't Cause I wanna see What you made of Bitch, hop in the tub Get naked Rub my dick with your toes You could do this Or go back to strip a pose I'm not a bad guy, I just know what I like But baby, right now you got vibes like a dyke I don't discriminate, but bitch, you must be honest I What's up, you guys? Uh, you're back, episode two, Good Boy Vibes Podcast Thanks for tuning in the second week I went back, I watched uh, the first episode uh, It was, I think it was good, we're off to a good start I mean, I went slow for the first 25 minutes and, you know, some days are going to be like that. But trust me, if you stick with me, it, I'm going to be saying stuff that maybe you'll want to hear. And a certain audience is going to want to hear this stuff, I think. But, uh, you know, I plan on doing the podcast of kind of starting off with a few easy topics. You know, something I want to talk about. Something I have something to say. And then we'll get into questions and then we'll wrap it up. You know, and some episodes may be 30 minutes long. Some may be an hour. I would never really go over an hour. I have no reason to. But that was uh, what you were just hearing was the new song I'm releasing tonight or tomorrow. Probably tonight. Well, there'll be Instagram, Snapchat, all that. Uh, you know, all that nonsense in the, you know, where I'll be announcing that stuff. But that was that new song, Hourglass, by your your boy local sauce boy. So check that out when it's released. It's it's a banger. You saw a little bit of a sneak peek right there. You know. You know what you're getting yourself into. A banger. Some you can play with a lady in a car. You have a lady in a car. You flip that on. You're getting laid tonight. So. I'll let you guys. I'll keep you guys posted on when that's released. Because. Hell, you might just be in a car once it's released and you want to get that that notification. Local Sauce Boy just dropped Hourglass. I'm in a car with a lady. Let me make some moves. What's been going on? I had a... I, I brought this up to a girl the other day. I, I was... Uh, talking about you know classic taint talk you know what a taint is it's that that little uh that little landscape that little environment you know that property that property line where a man's balls and cock you know you know there's a little landing strip to get to that asshole you gotta go all the way up the ass you know a, a man has a taint on him you know but I was talking to a girl and I was asking her about her taint. And we had a little a little discourse about taints. And, you know, you realize that a man's taint isn't like a woman's taint. You know, a woman barely has a taint. They got a little gappage. They got that pussy. And then they got that asshole. And they have a little sliver. That little, you know, you could barely land a plane on that bitch. You know, you could barely parallel park with a dude, you know, uh, a dude, he's got a whole ass property. He's got, uh, I mean, he has to pay taxes on his, uh, on his tank. You know, you got a forest building up. You got some hairs. Women also don't have hairy taints. I don't think they have enough, uh, room to have a taint, you know, to have a true taint, it's more of just a little, little, uh, God's kind of like, 
little parter. You know, it's kind of like a wall, just saying, "Hey, this is a pussy. This is a taint. This is a ve- this is a vagina, and this is your asshole. And here's the taint." You know, with a guy, it's like you got a cock and balls, and you got a whole ass strip of just whatever the fuck's going on, and then an asshole. You know, a dude's taint is uh. You know, I mean, there's definitely different taints for each guy, you know. But if we're talking mine and with my experience, you know, we got some hairs going on. We got a little forest of brewing. Uh, You could probably, you know, you got to clean that son of a bitch. Because that toilet paper ain't doing the trick. You're going to have a little bit of that extra, you know, that, that extra. A little bit of extra grease. But, you know, that's, uh, I found it kind of, kind of relaxing to think about, you know, we're not all the same. Everyone's talking about equality all the day, all the time, you know, but we're all the same, but hell, you check a girl's asshole, you're going to see vagina pretty close up to it. You check a dude's asshole, you got a force, and then you'll finally, you might have to take a little bit of a buggy. To get to the cock and balls, you might it might take a little journey, you know, a little Lewis and Clark expedition to get to the cock and balls from the anus. You know, a girl just got a little bit of a jumping pad; they could parkour over to the pussy from the asshole. You know, so you see a lot of girls interested in parkour nowadays because they, you know, they're they're built different. You know that they they got a, a body that. A person could parkour. We got a journey. We got a Lewis and Clark expedition. So while the ladies out here, you know, learning how to jump over a building or something, jump building to building, the boys, we're going on an expedition. We got horses. We got a buggy. You might need a boat to get over, you know. We got obstacle courses. You know, you might need a little bit. You might, you might uh, need to get a comb. Brush out a little path for you, like the Red Sea. You might need to get Moses. I think Moses is the one that read, that parted the Red Sea. I'm not sure. I'm not really a biblical guy, but that seems about right. That seems like something uh, Moses did. And if he didn't, then he could have. You know, he could have parted a Red Sea. No, but it kind of put things in perspective, you know, where uh, a guy's got a lot of a lot more area between his his uh, sex his sex reproduction system and his uh, poop and his pooper, or a girl they they're pretty close. So you know, think about that next time you. Uh, you ventured downwards on a woman. Sorry, my bad. Uh, but think about that next time you venture uh, to the to the lower part of a female. How close is that asshole to what I'm having a full course meal on? You know, the results may scare you. I went to West Virginia over the weekend. Uh, pretty fun, had a good time, saw my aunt, and uh, she was telling stories, she goes, oh, remember the time, remember the, aunts love telling stories, they, re- they love, uh, whether it's good or bad stories, they like reminding you that something happened, you know, so, so my aunt was telling me stories of my childhood, stupid shit I used to get into, and uh, then I brought up a little thing that she did that I, I found quite questionable, not at the moment, but as she was telling these stories over the weekend, I was like, I was like, oh, well, I got some dirt on you, girl. Uh, one time my aunt showed me, a, at, it was at a Christmas party, you know, it was at a Christmas party and my aunt whipped out uh, her little phone device and started showing me um, a mentally challenged person's Facebook, you know, and. I said mentally challenged because as we learned earlier on in this episode, we don't use, you know, we don't use the R word to describe such a person. 
you know, but my aunt does. She does use that R word. And she flipped out this mentally challenged man's uh, Facebook and started making fun of him to with like to me, with me, trying to get me to tag along. She was showing me his little uh, Christmas post because this was around the Christmas time. She was showing me her Christmas posts. You know, this is the kind of this is the kind of the kind of guy who he like twenty five days till Christmas. So he was wearing a different Christmas sweater each day. And was posting out a little Facebook post about it. You know, and nothing really warms my heart more than seeing a little, uh, uh, you know, an autism guy, you know, wear a sweater and post about it and talk about his sweater. You know, that makes me, that makes me feel good. I'm sure it makes a lot of, a lot of other people feel good when they, when they see, uh, when they see a man with autism in a sweater, in a Christmas sweater. But instead of making my aunt feel good, I mean, it made her feel good, but more in a, in kind of a way that it could get you uh, sent to hell. You know, she was showing me this, uh, this little boy, this, this little boy, he's a man, but he looked like a little boy in these Christmas sweaters. He, she was showing me his Facebook, you know, showing me all the Christmas sweaters. I go, who has that many Christmas sweaters? You know, but that wasn't the point to her. She was just, sh she was showing me and laughing me, laughing to me, scrolling through this poor guy, this dude who, you know, he's got half a, half a brain, so he's not really, you know, he doesn't know what other adults are, uh, you know, what other adults are saying about him. You know, but I kind of, in that moment, she was telling me these stories and I had a, I had a flashback of to when she, at this Christmas party, we're all supposed to be joyous, you know, and she's. She's flipping through this uh, this little autism's Facebook account, making fun of, showing all of her nieces and nephews a little autistic boy and a sweater. So, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I thought that shit stopped in high school or college, you know, making fun of people who don't really have a full processing brain. You know, a little bit chubby in the face, you know. A little bit of a wonky eye sometimes. You know, so I thought things changed. But not to my aunt. You know, there's still people out there. And I love my aunt. My aunt's a sweet lady. But when it comes down to seeing a, you know, a little, uh, you know, mentally challenged young man wearing a Christmas sweater, you know, she still got them jokes. And she wasn't even telling it really any jokes with it. She was just showing us. She was just showing us a kid with autism, a, bo a man. He had a beard too, so he was a man. He wasn't a child. You know, so she wasn't even telling any jokes. She just flipping, laughing, and expecting us to laugh with her. You know, and at one point I was like, this dude is just wearing, this dude just has the most Christmas spirit. I like this guy. I'm sure I wouldn't talk to him or ever meet him in my life. Even if I had the chance, I probably would shy away from that just because, you know, not anything to do with him. But, you know, I've been known to get a little bit of anxiety around uh, Christmas sweaters. All right, we uh, let's get into some questions today. You know, we're uh, we're batting away, we're batting away. We have a lot of good questions today. So how this is going is uh, I'll play the question in here, but what you're gonna be hearing is uh, and seeing because we got a few uh, video messages today as well. Uh, it's gonna be on the screen for you guys, which I don't know why I'm telling you that because. You'll already see it. But uh, first question right here, we're going with, uh, this is a man by the name of Francis. Hi, Gio, it's Francis. Um, I got a hypothetical question for you. So you're married, it's early on in the marriage, and you're having your first child. I am very excited for this time, for this day, you know? He's putting it a lot, you know, we haven't gotten there yet, but, 
you know, I'm already kind of trying to picture myself in this moment, and, I, and I'm, I'm a happy little camper. And one month in, you find out, one month into the pregnancy, you find out that the baby is going to be mentally challenged. We've had a lot of mentally challenged talk this episode, and you know what? Uh, it, it's something that needs to be discussed, really. We need to have more awareness about mentally challenged and see how he used the word mentally challenged instead of uh, retard, which is a bad, we don't really, we don't like, we don't say that. Down syndrome, autistic, but severe. Severe. So, you could, you have the option, you could abort it. Or you could keep it. What would you do? All right, very good question from uh, Francis. Great guy right there. Uh, so he asked if we got news one month in that our child, that me and my wife's child, you know, uh, is going to have some severe type of autism. And would we keep it? We have the option to abort it, you know? And, uh, you know, that really just goes down to uh, my wife, you know? What does she want to do? Does she want to have this kid who, you know, sh you know, might have a little bit, a little bit of trouble trying to organize crayons, you know? You know, we might give our little son or daughter a box of crayons and say, you know, color code these. And they might have a little bit of trouble. So you got to think about that in the future. You know, what will my child be able to do with, you know, these disabilities? But I, I probably, I, I would go straight to her. I'd go, what, what, what do you want? You know? If she wants an abortion, I'm down. And that might shock a lot of people, but hey. You know, if the baby's not born yet, you know, and you already know, you know, you might want to try again. You might want to, you know, it's not really fair for a person who's mentally challenged, you know. It's not really fair. You know, so that's where, I, I mean, I'm pro-choice, but I'm also a man. So where do I, where do I come in? You know, and uh, I'm pro-autism, but... You know, I'm also not autistic. At least I don't think so, so who am I to say? You know, so I would see what my wife said. You know, if she wanted to keep it, then we're down. Let's have this autistic kid, you know? Let's treat let's treat this kid, you know, as well as we would anybody. This is our child. If she wanted to get the abortion, though, I'd probably be like, you're a you're pretty crazy. I'd probably just like you're you're a wild woman, because no woman wants to go through abortion. I don't think it's not like the top thing. You know, it's not on anyone's bucket list. I hope like I hope to have an abortion one day, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. So I don't know exactly how to answer. I would just uh you know from a man's perspective, I would just go straight to my wife. Hey, baby, you've been holding this little son of a bitch in your stomach. Are you trying to have it, you know, you know, get confused a lot, you know? You're trying to have a baby who kind of walks around a little bit confused all the time? Or are you just trying to have a little baby with, uh, you know, that kind of knows what's going on? So I put that, I put that, uh... I put that in her hands, you know, but very good question, Francis. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one, honestly, because no one wants to, I'm not going to, um, before I get fucking eliminated from this earth, um, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Next question, this is uh, by a boy named Dylan, a good man right here, too. Hello, hello, hi, okay, so I just have um, a question. It's more um, a search for advice. So okay. Advice. I would just like to know what you would do in this situation. Um, I happened to match with a 24-year-old um, med student that goes to Ohio State. She's from California. She's very, very good-looking. I mean, 
super good looking. Mm-hmm. Um, I managed to uh, land a date with her. Sheesh. And I was just, my plan is to immediately impregnate her. Mm-hmm. So I can move back to California with her. Yep. And start a life as a stay-at-home dad. That would be so cool. Um, so I just want to know, should I impregnate her? Mm -hmm. Or, like, is that what the goal is? Mm -hmm. To impregnate her? Or should I, like, try something else? Okay, thanks. Bye. That's a young man who's in need of some advice. And, man, it looks like you already got your, uh... You're a little, you, you already know what you're doing. You already got this all planned out. You, you score a date with a 24-year-old who lives in Cali, and you land a date. And if you are not trying to immediately impregnate this woman, then, you know, that's all you, bro. But, yeah, I, I, I would go in there with the intention. I wouldn't let her know. because She's 24. She wants, a, she wants her life, you know. But, you know, but sometimes you got to be a little bit greedy. Sometimes you got to make, put the decision in your own hand and go, I got, I scored, I scored this. And this, I scored this date with this hot 24 year old babe who lives in Cali. You know, so you got to, you got to put everything in. You got to go, I got to do something for me. You know, this is, this is your chance. So you got to impregnate this woman. I wouldn't let her know. Like I said, because she wants to live a life, but like, but also, you know, you only live once. And you might never get an opportunity like this again. And if you don't take full, if you don't take a full initiative of this and impregnate and don't impregnate this woman, then you're going to regret it later. You are. That's 100%. You gotta impregnate this woman, you know. She'll come to you a couple days, a week later, be like, "Dylan, I'm pregnant," and you look at her dead in the eyes and you go, "We have to, we have to go back to Cali. This isn't this college area is not Ohio State is not the environment for our son or daughter to be born." We have to go back to Cali. You know, you have to get real serious about it when she brings it. You can't take it as a joke. You can't be like, oh, you're pregnant? What should we do? No, when she comes back to you after you get a little nut in her, you know, as soon as she breaks the news, like, Dylan, I'm pregnant. You go, we have to go back to Cali. That's all you have to say. Dylan, I'm pregnant. We have to go back to Cali now. Get on the train. We have to go. This is our son or daughter's life on the line. Get me to the nearest flight to Cal. Get me to Cali. I need to be in Cali now. I need to be in a new house in Cali now with our, with our, with our offspring. Dylan, I'm pregnant. I don't. I don't know what to do. I, I. I'm so sorry. We have to go to Cali now. We have to go buy a house in Cali. You have your family has to go buy us a house in Cali for us to live, for our offspring to have a nice childhood. Dylan, I don't know what to do. Get, start booking flights, bitch. We gotta be in Cali soon, cause we gotta fucking. We got a little mini me running around here soon. So that, yeah, that, I mean that's the plan, Stan. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. You know. And if that baby, you know, a couple months into the pregnancy, you, it turns out this baby's about to have severe mental disabilities, then you know you got to get that abortion and start over. Next question. Next question. This is our first uh, video question, so you'll be seeing this one, this bad, this bad boy question on the screen. On the screen. Hi, I'm 
asking a question. My question is, do you think your father is proud of the person you've become? I love your work. I love the show. Big fan. Kisses. See ya. Big fan of the show. She just asked the uh, she just asked the important question. Do you think your father is a proud of where you are or who you are today? You know, and that's a question that's hard to answer. I, I feel like uh what does my father have to be proud of right now? You know, I'm a freshman in college. You know, so I'm grinding away at this college joint in the middle of COVID. So it's kind of hard, you know. But I haven't really accomplished much. You know, I accomplished, uh, like, what I accomplished isn't something a dad would be proud of. You know, I, I've released a lot of music. You know, some I'm proud of, some I'm not. Most I'm not, but, like, I'm getting better. And I like seeing, you know, the, prog the progression within my music, you know. I've done a lot of things on YouTube, whether that's like an interview series in high school or just little short films that I've done with my friends, you know, I've done those. You know, I've done stand-up a few times, that's what I'm planning to do for the long haul, you know. Writing a lot of material for that, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm 18, you know, I, I got like, I got a few years until, you know, I think my dad is like, going to be asking me, should I be proud of you? I don't think my dad will ever ask me that, but, uh, you know, I got a few more, few more years until I got to really worry about that question of, did I make my father proud? Because I'm still on this grind, you know? This is the second episode of the podcast. Maybe by episode 50, 50 you know, when we get to that 50th episode, maybe my dad's going to be calling me and going, Son, I love what you're doing with the podcast, but this is the second episode. You know, he very may well call me after this and go, did you do the second episode? I'm going to go, yeah, and he's going to go, fuck you. Like, he could easily just do that, just to grind my gears. So, you know, uh, is he proud of me and my accomplishments? Probably not yet, but I think he's proud of me in the in the way of you know, I'm, I raised a pretty cool dude, you know. You want to raise a good, you want to raise a cool guy. You don't want to raise a, a little snot ball, you know. You don't want to raise a guy who, you know, beats on women. You don't want to raise a guy who, you know listens to emo music. You don't want a guy who uses the bathroom too much at school, you know. You know, you know you have a few classes with a guy and every class he's always asking to use the restroom. You don't want that guy because by the third time he asks, you have five classes with this dude. He asks him third time in a row, you're in the third class. You know, with this dude, and he's like, can I use the restroom? You already know he ain't doing that. He ain't taking a shit nor a poop. Or a piss. Shit, piss, or poop. He ain't doing neither. He's probably hitting his little jewel. He's probably hitting his little disposable. Might be hitting a weed pen. Might be doing some cocaine. Might be injecting some shit into his veins. Might be doing steroids. You know, because by the third bathroom break on a school day, you know, that's not a good guy. You know, that's not somebody a father would be proud of, you know. Yeah, my son, yeah, my son, little Harold. My son, little Harold, he, he uses the restroom five to six times a day during school. Yeah, my son, little Harold, he... The first two times he has to use the restroom, he's either making a poop or a piss. But that third time, he's he's getting some vape. That fourth time, he's doing a line with his with his friends. He has a lot of friends, and they do lines of coke. And that's my son. I love my son. It's a good question. So I think you know. 
Sure. My dad's proud of me, I think. I hope so. I hope so. All right, last question from a sweet little lady named Regan. This is another video, so you'll be seeing this little bad bitch on the screen. I didn't mean to call you a bitch. My apologies. Okay, hi, Gio. I, I literally look like shit right now because I just took an exam, and I've literally been in house arrest for the past two weeks because of exams. But I have a would-you-rather question. Um, so... Would you rather have someone make, like, a mystery drink for you that you have to drink the entire thing, um, and the reward is $1,000, but it's, like, all the things that you absolutely hate of foods. So, like, anything moldy, anything, like, just gross, like, vegetables. I hate vegetables, but, like, <laughs> anything that's gross that you hate and you know you would throw up from for $1,000. Or would you rather get shot in both feet with an arrow for a thousand dollars this woman just asked me if i'd rather drink a moldy gross drink or get shot in my feet with two arrows i'm gonna take the one where i could still walk afterwards you know, the one that doesn't involve a wheelchair for half a year. The one that doesn't involve my feet literally being punctured by sharp knives. You know what, I might take the one that involves less, um, you know, insertion of blades. Hell, I might take the one that doesn't really involve a hospital trip. You know, I might go with the answer that doesn't involve me possibly bleeding out from the feet. You know, a bitch could make me a... Or a man, too. He could make me a smoothie with the mold and sardines, mushrooms, squash... Melons, all the shit I hate. And I probably still drink it. And, it. and if he's making me a smoothie, and he asks me, what's all the things you hate? Hell, I might lie to him. I might say, yeah, I hate strawberries. Bananas are disgusting. Dude, if you put some vanilla ice cream in that with, you know, some chocolate syrup, I'm going to get pissed. So I might lie to this guy. He doesn't know what I like or not. But there's no way around two fucking arrows in the feet, huh? Final answer, I'm going with that drink. Oh, I'm going to make the worst drink you've ever tasted. What do you want? What don't you want in it? I'm going to put everything you don't want. Everything you hate, I'm going to put in this little smoothie. Well, if you put blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, bananas mangoes and peaches, I'm going to get pissed. That sounds horrible. I'd be pissed. Alright, that's all for questions. So, uh, we're about to wrap up this episode here soon. Uh, but I do want to talk about something, a little thing that uh, I was thinking about was thinking about today uh, was the I saw over the weekend and during the week everyone has been posting their uh, their Spotify wrap ups or their Apple Music replays you know seeing the stats of the year on music and I'm a, I am love music I listen to a lot of rap I listen to a little bit of everything so I always get excited when this time of the year comes around so I can uh, flex my music taste on these hoes you know, so I, I load up my Apple Music because I'm not poor and use Spotify. You know, I'm not poor. You know, I'm not like a low life, you know, garbage pail kid using Spotify. I use Apple Music. So I load up this replay and I'm excited. I'm like, what's my top song going to be? I'm guessing. It's definitely going to be rap, you know. Maybe something from Comethazine. You know, that ignorant idiot rap. You know, that'd make me feel good. Like, oh, Geo's listened to... uh 
you know, this little idiot boy, this little idiot rapper talking about fucking hoes and killing bitches, you know? Doing drugs. You know, so I got a little bit excited. I was like, maybe I'm going to have some ignorant rap up there. But I load up my uh, Apple Music Replay, and this, uh, I look at my top songs and my top artists. You know, and my top song just happened to be uh, What's Poppin'. So my top song of the year is What's Poppin'. By Jack Harlow. He's also my top artist of the year. You know, and I wouldn't be so pissed, but it's kind of rough. You know, a lot of these people, they're like, my top artist is Juice World, and I listen to Phoebe Bridgers. That She's my top song. You know, and I got and people get in a conversation like, what's your top song? Like, that's genuinely a conversation I have with multiple people, multiple people, you know, during this time of the year of like, what was your top song? Who's your top artist? What What's your favorite album? You know, and when somebody asked me that question, I gotta go, oh, my top song was What's Poppin'? Brand New Whip Just Hopped In. I got options. I could pass that bitch like Stockton. Just joshing, I'ma spend this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top ten. I could put Bond and Denzel, put a bit of peace in the front zone. You know, so that kind of hurt. I was like, oh shit. I got the most basic banger of the year as my top song, you know. You know, what's that, what's that like, you know? That's like having God's plan. As your top song of 2018. What's your top song? God's plan. What's your top song? What's poppin'? You know, and I love Jack Harley. He's my top artist. I'm a huge fan. And I would have loved to have his any of his music as my top song. But it hurt a little bit seeing what's poppin'. It hurt to see... A song that's so basic and so popular, you know. It'd be the same as having the box, you know. People who whose top song is the box and what's popping, we're in the same boat and we're struggling. So, a little shout out awareness for a Spotify wrap up and album music replay because we're, the box and what's popping people are uh, we're out here and we're struggling. So show, show support to a friend if they got that what's popping. Anyways, the Spotify wrap up means we're going to wrap this bad bitch up. Uh, we're good on time, actually. I'm proud of the time that we've circumferenced. I'm just going to take this time as like a little outro as in uh, to let you guys know what the future plans are. You know, so if you want to send in video or voice recording questions, please do, you know. Um, I'm excited, you know, I, I love answering your guys' questions, especially if they're funny or deal with you personally, and, you know, so you send them to my email, if you got my number, fucking hit my line, bitch, but, uh, yeah, send them to my email, they'll be in the description, uh, I got a song coming out, you heard a little bit of it today, but no, yeah, for real, uh, uh, you know, gotta get that bag. Sorry, I just lost train of thought. You know, sometimes you just black out and uh, you're like, oh, I have to finish a sentence. So I gotta finish a few sentences here and then I'll fucking sign off. But yeah, so send in questions to my email. They'll, they'll be in the description. I got a song coming out tonight. Uh, you know, stay tuned. I'm going to try to get some guests in here, maybe over Zoom, maybe in person here soon. But I definitely want some guests in this bitch. I want to talk to everybody, you know. I might have some little Zoom call or somebody come in on Zoom and we'll just ch chop it up for a little bit. Maybe not even a full guest, but like maybe a little few call-ins, you know. Hit up our friends, see what they're doing. But 
yeah, that's uh, that's it for this episode. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Check out the song Hourglass tonight.